The Indiana Pacers were the most successful team in the old American Basketball Association, winning three ABA championships in the 70s. But in 22 NBA seasons, the Pacers have never gone beyond the conference finals. In fact, no former ABA team has. If the Indiana Pacers are to be the first, today is a must win for them just as Saturday was, when Reggie Miller turned in one of the most stirring fourth quarter performances in recent playoff history. If this were a regular season game, I doubt Reggie Miller would be playing. He continues to hobble, but he can shoot. Pacers have gained momentum and confidence in their attempt to dethrone the champions. A Memorial Day win would even the series at two and give the Indiana Pacers a chance to make some NBA history for themselves. Game four, next. is the NBA on N the 1998 NBA Playoffs. Today, it's the Chicago Bulls versus the Indiana Pacers. In both 94 and 95, the Indiana the series they're halfway there now against the defending champion Chicago Bulls but a big question after his terrific performance in game three how much will Reggie Miller be able to give them this afternoon at Marcus Square Arena this was moments ago slightly scheduled to start against the Bulls once again we greet you shouting over in at Market Square Arena with Isaiah Thomas and Doug Collins. I'm Bob Costas. Let's go right to Reggie. What a performance in quarter number four on Saturday. Well, game three was the Reggie Miller show, and the Pacers needed all of it, Bob. He came limping out of the uh, locker room and put on quite a show in the fourth quarter, hitting three three-point shots and a little two-pointer to put his team up by eight late in the ball game. But he was sensational, and he gave this team such an emotional lift. You see him coming off this screen here. This will put them up eight and really seal the win for them late. Now, this was a lot different than what we saw at the United Center. In game one, Reggie Miller was 0 for 2 in the fourth quarter. In game two, he was 2 for 3. But he put his signature on game three. Four out of five, three out of three from the three-point line. Bob, stars win championships. They need another dose of Reggie Miller. And once again, they need to take care of the basketball today. Zeke stars do win championships. The Bulls have five because they have two of the greatest players of all time. Bob, and the Pacers have targeted the Bulls stars and Michael George and Scottie Pippen. Every time Scottie Pippen moves, they want to put a body on him. They want to alleviate the pressure that he's putting on Mark Jackson. So every time he tries to go through a screen, they want to lay him down. And with Michael Jordan, Jalen Rose told us that they want to challenge his shots. They want to make him work for shots. Even though he's going to make them, they want to put a hand in his face. Now we know when Michael loses, he comes back and he has big efforts. That 63 you see was against Larry Bird. That 55 was against Charles Barkley. And I'm sorry to say that 47 that he dropped on Detroit, that was against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, even though he had 30 in game three, he was just nine for 22. But as a comparison, the worst shooting game he's ever had in the playoffs, three for 18 against the Knicks game three in 93. He comes back on Memorial Day in game four and scores 54 on 18 of 30. Let's go to Ahmad with more on Reggie Miller. All right, thanks, Bob. I spoke with Med Reggie Miller before the game. He said he is still sore and very stiff. He's had treatment on that ankle the last day and a half, but he says it's such an important game that he will play, he will start, but we won't know how effective it will be until the game starts. Bob? Ahmad, thanks very much. We're coming back to Market Square with the starting lineup and the opening tip-off. The NBA on NBC. That whenever.
Whenever you feel good, it's Miller time. By Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. And by the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? Race weekend and playoff weekend in Indianapolis. The Bulls starting lineup for game four. Jordan averaging 34 in the series, had 30 in game three, but shot, as we mentioned, only nine of 22. Dennis Rodman has said, I have to start to be my most effective. Phil Jackson apparently disagrees. Who coach will start? Rodman comes off the bench today. Concerning Reggie Miller, Phil Jackson said, look, we have to assume that if he plays, he's 100%. We're not concerned about it. Of Reggie Miller's 28 points in game three, nine came in the first four minutes, 13 in the last four and a half. Rick Smith's not much of a presence for them in game three. They won anyway. Dale Davis starts, but Antonio Davis has been playing the important minutes down the stretch. Larry Bird may have won the battle of gamesmanship with Phil Jackson coming into game three. He complained after the games in Chicago that the officials were letting defenders rough up the Indiana players. Well, it appeared that game three was called more closely than the first two games. Pippen got hit with two quick fouls. Rodman eventually fouled out. I think a important thing to watch here today, Bob, is with the insertion of Tony Kukoc into the lineup. Let's see if the Bulls can win a turnover game as they did in game one and game two. The tip to Indiana. Hugh Evans, Bill Oaks, Ronnie Nunn are the officials. And how they work it will be a very important factor in game four. Mullen is open. He doesn't miss many of those. The rebound to Harper. Who coach on the run? that matchup does quickness goes to Tony Kukoc now on the other end they'll try to pound the ball inside to Dale Davis remember in game one with Kukoc on him he had a big first quarter with eight points Harper up on Miller Jackson open for three that's exactly the way he started game three hitting the open three-point shot Scotty Pippen always helping into the post off Mark Jackson and again Doug that's big for Mark Jackson's confidence to come out and make his first shot Jordan spinning on Miller and then throwing it away trying to find Harper Miller is guarding Jordan when the Bulls have the ball, and we're watching to see what, if any, effects of the ankle injury are apparent. Smiths turns on Longwood. The hook. Excellent patience that time by Rick Smiths. The guy sunk back into his lap. He took his time, put it on the floor. The great little jump hook in the lane. Scotty. And he tips home his own miss to make it 5-4. You see, they'll go at Miller right away to test that ankle. When Scotty missed that shot, Miller wasn't able to block him out. And Scotty got the easy tap in. Mullen lost it. Jordan back with Pippen. Scotty to the hole, fouled by Jackson. Now, I, I had a, I sprained my ankle in the playoff game. Now, the toughest thing for Reggie Miller is going to be backpedaling right there. You see, he has to change direction. It's going to be tough for him to defend, change directions, and pivot off that ankle. He'll have it loose the first half, but let's watch him the second half as he comes back out because that's when that ankle will have a tendency to blow up and get tighter. Pippen, who was only three of seven at the line in game three, misses his first one. Your performance, Zeke, on the bad ankle in 88 against the Lakers in the finals is one of the most courageous in NBA history. Kukoc with the rebound. Now the drive. So they get the two points on this trip down the floor despite the free throw misses by Scotty. Those multiple shots, that's what absolutely killed Indiana in games one and two. Davis. Smith's the follow. 
See, Chicago has gone back to its speed lineup. And right now, what Indiana must do is make sure they get field goal attempts because even if they miss the shot, they have an advantage on the board. Pippen thought a pacer touched it last. Hugh Evans didn't agree. See, Tony Kuko jumped the floor, helping on Mark Jackson. They got to go in the post to Davis. Davis takes the lob from Jackson. And heeds Coach Collins' advice immediately. See, when your man helps off of you, Bob, what you got to do is run straight to the front of the rim. If they're going to double out on the floor, you're playing four on three. Defense! 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 Loose ball to Smiths and Kukoc with a foul over the back. Mark Jackson drives the ball out of the double team. See, Tony Kukoc cannot get back. And you know Mark Jackson makes that little lob pass probably better than anybody in the NBA. Mullen faking on Jordan. Jackson behind the back to Smiths. Reggie out of the corner. Tough shot, air. Pippen dishes to Michael. Michael's first basket, 9-8 Pacers. Transition defense, Reggie could not get back out of that corner. The Bulls had numbers and took advantage. Schnitz throws it away right to us. The Pacers contained their turnovers in game three. 15, 16 of them. Part of the reason why they were able to win. They also continued to shoot well from the field. It's Kuko hitting. The Pacers have continually outshot the Bulls, but because Chicago has had such a huge advantage on the boards, especially the offensive boards, and they forced more turnovers and gotten more shots, they've been able to win two of the three. Bob, they're averaging 10 more field goal attempts a game and eight more free throw attempts a game. That plays into exactly what you're saying. Their percentage is lower, but they're unable to shoot a lower percentage because they're getting more shots because of the steals and the offensive rebounds. Foul was on Longley. Pacer ball from the side. The Pacers have shot 50% in the series and lost two of the three games. Another Chicago foul. Longley again, his second. This is nothing new for him. Early foul difficulties. See what Rick, Rick Smith is trying to do, he's trying to establish post position and he wants to move Longley around. And they're battling in there, and it's, it's always, Doug, you get caught on the second reaction. Now, remember, when this happened the other day in the third quarter, Winnington came into the game. They went to Smith. He scored seven straight points. Winnington cannot handle him in there. Hey. Miller. Smith. They let him play. There was some contact. No whistle. Mullen for three. Michael over Miller. Can't tie it. Reggie has the rebound. See, with this matchup with Dale Davis and Tony Kukoc, I think they should put Antonio Davis in and let him pound Kukoc because I think he matches up better. Smith hits the hook, and the Pacers lead it 14-10. That's the, that's the matchup. Bob, the NBA game is a game of matchups. If you see one you like, you've got to go to it and take advantage of it. Wennington in for Longley, driving and hammered by Dale Davis. Mullen with a three, Smith with a hook in the lane, and the Pacers with a 14-10 lead. Now Mullen has been shooting the ball extremely well. The only problem is Jordan has been so close to him. That time he got some free air, and he was able to get the shot off. You see Smith being guarded by Wennington and puts it on the floor and goes right to the middle for his little easy hook.
Rick Smith's off to a great start, and they need him today with Reggie Miller hobbling. He's been very active in the post. He comes across the lane against Luke Longley with a jump hook. The yeah. offensive rebound, a little push on Tony Kukos, a little banker. Once again, the hook shot in the lane, this time over Winnington. You see his numbers in the series, not enough shot attempts, especially in game three. Only six shots in 28 minutes today. He's taken four already in the first five and a half minutes of the game. Meanwhile, Reggie Miller is 0 for 2. Too early to say if that indicates a trend, but if he doesn't give them what they usually get from him in a playoff game, 20-plus, obviously Smiths has to have a big game. And you know, Bob, Reggie Miller is such a factor that he could go stand in a parking lot and someone will go with him. So you're not going to give him any distance. So he's the kind of guy that you have to honor, even if he's not 100%, which in many instances it frees it up for a lot of other people. And Doug Smith started out slow in that New York series. His first game, he was 3 for 19. And in the last four, he was 33 of 58, shooting 57% from the field. Jordan going for the steal. Dale Davis recovers it. Rodman is in now for Kukoc. Tony shot three for three while he was in there. Jackson on the drive, off balance shot, doesn't get the roll. Tipped by Davis, no. Smith keeps it alive. Now Jackson has it again. Mullen tries to scoop in between two defenders. Another try and a third. But still there's a lid on the basket. Rodman rests it away and may get a technical here. He slams the ball to the floor. And they don't tee him up. Dennis Rodman will have part two of his interview with you, Bob, on, sh on our halftime feature, so we want to make sure everybody stays around. You did a terrific job with that. I think a real candid uh, talking there by Dennis Rodman. Let's go to Ahmad. All right, thanks, Bob. Dennis Rodman, who normally when he doesn't start, keeps himself warm by riding an exercise bike or walking on a treadmill. He doesn't have either one of those here. He's been very stiff sitting on the bench. I asked him, would that layoff hurt him? He said, obviously it will because I'm the same age as you are. He's actually a little younger than I am, Bob. Jordan's shot is shoved back in his face. Here's Jackson. Rick Smith wants the ball. Give him the basketball. He just got a big block. He scored. Throw him the ball. They do. Rodman is on him, giving away lots of height. Jackson open. Short. And Rodman rests the rebound away from a teammate. See, they know Winnington cannot handle Rick Smith, so now they put Rodman into guard, and he'll try to use his leverage because he doesn't have the size. Michael Jordan asked for a 20-second timeout. And Michael appears to be bleeding in the area of his right eye, unless that was a bead of sweat. The block by Smits, the save by Mullen. See, I think he got caught hit. He got hit right in the eye after the block. You see Smith to come down, and as he extends, I think he gets hit right there. And he turns around and look and say, no foul. Referee say, no blood, no foul. He say, I'm showing blood. So with 5.01 to play in the first, Michael Jordan is out for a while with his team down by two. One of the things that's been obvious in this series is the aggressive team, the team that's come up with the loose balls has won each of the games. Today, the Pacers are a little quicker to all those loose balls. You thought three possessions here, the Pacers came up with every one of them. Kukoc comes back in. To Pippen for the reverse that ties the game. Good look by Kukoc. What a great athletic play, too. Tony got bailed out. He got in the air, no place to go, and Scotty saved him. Out to Jackson. Four seconds to shoot. Dale Davis will, and he gets the roll. See, I think Indiana's going to have to make a decision. They don't like to double team in the post, but anytime Reggie Miller is guarding Tony Kukoc or Scottie Pippen, they're taking them into the post, and I don't think physically he can handle them one-on-one -on -one down there. 
Miller pokes it out of bounds away from Kukoc. You see Mark Jackson came that time to give him a little help on the spin, but he's not physical and strong enough right now to hold those guys in the post. Well, I think Jalen Rose is going to come in the game to guard him. I think Larry Bird sees the same thing. Isaiah does not like the matchup. They do not want a double team because then that messes up the rebounding. So they like to stay at home on their people. That's why you saw the substitution. Jalen Rose has had one good game in each playoff series so far for Indiana. They need a few more if they're to somehow get by Chicago. Hold on, Mullen fouls Pippen. Reggie Miller goes to the bench without having scored so far. Jordan is in the locker room having a cut in the area of his right eye attended to. And Michael was only one for four from the field before he went out. Ahmad Rashad is back in the Bulls locker room. As soon as he has some information, they'll pass it along to us. Mullen goes out, and Derek McKee is in to replace him. That was the second foul on Chris. Harper into the lane, slicing through. Nice move. Rick Smith just does not have the quickness to jump out and trap that screen and roll. So anytime he's involved, the Bulls really look to turn the corner and get it all the way to the basket. Harper did it that time with his left hand. Jackson from Smith's. The follow by Davis. Jackson blew the open layup, but Davis was there to cover for him. And what you'll notice is anytime that Mark Jackson makes a pass into the post, Pippen is roving. Wennington ties it again. When you know your personnel. It's a tough cover for Rick Smith to get out to Bill Wennington. He's more of a jump shooter than he is a post player. Jackson evades Pippen. And Smith misses off the potential assist. Kukoc fires and misses the three. And it's out of bounds to Chicago. Back to Market Square after this. Ahmad Rashad back at Market Square Arena. Moments ago, Michael Jordan on this drive to the basket was just swiped over the right eye there by Rick Smith. It caused a cut to the upper part of his right eyelid. He has been taken to the locker room. They're trying now to close it with sterile stitches. Now, if that doesn't work, it doesn't stop the bleeding. They'll try to go back and try to close it with actual stitches. As of right now, he's having that uh, application applied now, and he'll be back in the game. Bob? Ahmad, thank you. Remember, as most of you know, it is an NBA rule that you cannot be on the floor with an open wound unless the bleeding has been completely stopped. You cannot play, no matter how much you may want to, no matter who you are. Pippen's pass deflected. Scott Burrell into the game now. That's an early substitution for him. We've seen in the first three games either Randy Brown or Steve Kerr. It looks like Phil Jackson wants to go with a bigger perimeter team. Scott Burrell in for the first time. Pippen a long one. And the rebound to Antonio Davis. Now let's see if Indiana goes to Antonio Davis right now. Adele Davis guarded by Kuko. Harper's on Jackson. Trying his post-up game now. We haven't seen much of that in this series. And Harper blocks it. And turns and shoots. Someone got a piece of it. It winds up in Pippen's hands, but he's standing on the end line. What's Dennis thinking? Well, right now, Rodman is just trying to get into the game. He has a hard time coming off the bench. Chicago has made the gamble that they'll try to force turnovers and they'll sacrifice his rebounding. Right now, he's just trying to get himself into the game. He's on Antonio Davis, who backs him down and shoots. It's off. Dale Davis takes it and hits the muscle of the Pacer front line. He's really their only big body other than Rodman. They need to keep going to the offensive boards, Bob. That's 10 offensive rebounds here in the first quarter. Harper hits it. It's a two-point basket. His foot was just on the line. Tied at 20. Here's Michael Jordan coming out of the locker room. The cut has been bandaged. He's headed for the Chicago bench. Jalen Rose, quick catch and shoot, overshot it. 
That's a tough shot for Jalen Rose. He's not a catch and shoot shooter. He has to put it on the floor and create a shot. Pippen puts it on the floor and with the left hand completes the drive plus the foul. The Bulls are in front. Michael returns to the bench and immediately returns to the lineup. Here he comes. You know, Michael always looks for things to get him going. He got off to a slow start, only two points of the first Bulls, 18 points. Actually, now they have scored 22, but he looks for these little things to get him going. He saw the side of his own blood. That's not a good sign for the Pacers. See, right now, I wouldn't take any chances with Michael Jordan. Every time he touches the ball in the low post, I would run a guy at him and double team him because if he gets hot, he's capable of putting 55, 60 points on the board. So I would not let him get on track this first half. He's guarding Travis Best, who's replaced Mark Jackson in the Pacer backcourt. Reggie Miller peels off the warm-up. He's headed for the scorer's table. Antonio Davis from McKee. Well, that was a great look because the big man stepped out to help as the man came around the screen and he did just what you teach him to do, go right to the basket. An excellent pass by McKee. See, what Indiana is doing is what we did a lot in Detroit when we played against Chicago. They're a speed team. So you try to attack them with your body. You got to put your body on them to impede their speed. Rodman with the pass, Burrell with the bucket, the Bulls with a three-point lead. McKee working on Pippen, left hand. Hold on, there's a whistle before the shot. No basket. Pippen's first foul. Reggie Miller is back. And Ron Harper returns for the Bulls with Kukoc leaving. See, the Bulls match with a small lineup right now. They can switch anything, any screen roll, any down screen, switch it so you can't have a catch and shoot at the end of this quarter. Game clock overlaps the shot clock by a couple of seconds. Rose drives on Burrell and scoops it up off the glass. Now that's what Jalen Rose is effective. Putting it on the floor, taking it to the basket. Jordan with five seconds. Baseline. Did Rodman touch it? The Pacers think he did. The officials don't. I guess they ruled that was an air ball, not in the cylinder, because Rodman definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Lift your foot, Dennis. Dennis, yeah. lift your foot. Once again, I'd like to say stay tuned for that interview at halftime with Bob Costas and Dennis Rodman. They are now soulmates. Yeah. <laughs> the big man. <laughs> I took a hit, buddy, I'll tell you that. I saved you. I caught a split. It was coming right through your head. <laughs> he packed some punch. <laughs> Meanwhile, hey, watch the hustle. Look, look at, look at Warren. We don't Where's see Bob. Bob. Where's Bob? <laughs> Where's Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you know him a little better than now, huh, Bob? <laughs> yeah, we're getting to know each other very well this weekend. <laughs> Some sort of real bond is developing. He can't stay away from me. So meanwhile, Rodman appeared to have come close to of touching the Jordan jumper, but the officials ruled that he did not. So Michael's basket counts. Another basket from Michael right at the end of a quarter with two defenders on him. He's done that so often in this series. They count the basket. It gives the Bulls the lead. And now it's Pacer ball from the side with 1.2 seconds left. Now that's a good play as long as the ball is not in the cylinder. Got a catch and shoot. It's best short. After one. A quarter in which Michael sustained a cut, and I was nearly crushed. The Bulls lead the Pacers by three. You're watching the NBA on NBC.
This is the NBA on NBC. The 1998 NBA Playoffs. The Bulls lead by three, but Michael Jordan has gotten off to a slow start, shooting one for five. The Pacers have contested every shot you see here with the turnover, the fading jump shot. Again, Reggie Miller in the post, Michael fading away. Getting good looks at the basket, nothing going. And this is the play that he got hit by Rick Smith. And for more on that, let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, all right, thanks, Doug. Uh, just continuing up on my report, those Band-Aid strips that you see over Michael's eye are called sterile strips. They're trying to stop the bleeding right now. At halftime, they'll take another look at it. If it's still bleeding, they'll put in the real stitches. Now, I asked Michael during that just time out if it affected his eyesight. He said it did not affect his eyesight, and he's ready to go. Bob? Thanks, Ahmad. The reason why you saw but two points beneath Michael's name, that last basket right at the end of the period was credited to Rodman, not to MJ. Michael gets an inadvertent assist, I guess. Gets it back from Rodman here, and it spills out for him. Reggie Miller whips it inside to Antonio Davis, who was bumped. But the contact goes the other way, according to the officials, and it's on the Pacers. The, the pace of this game is very similar to game three, where the Bulls had a big first half, 56 points, wore down a little bit. The Pacers would like to keep them running, keep the pressure on them for 48 minutes so their bench can have an effect. The call is traveling on Antonio Davis prior to the contact. No foul. And now Michael, just one of six. Not anymore. Her on best. Six seconds to shoot. It'll be best. And Burrell takes the rebound. Curve from Rodman. Double teamed on the baseline. Jordan against Rose. Three seconds to shoot. Two in a row now for Michael. I wouldn't take any chances. You got to go get them, Doug, because right now this game is kind of getting away from you a bit. Best around Kerr. Pacers suddenly trail by seven. Davis a chance to cut into it and does. Steve Kerr limping a little bit. Looks like maybe he got knee in the thigh. We'll have to keep an eye on him. He's wincing and hobbling around out there. Who coach off to Kerr and gets it back. Fade away. Tony Kuko with a strong first half. McKee from the head of the key. And the loose ball bounces to Jordan. Bill Oates blows the whistle. Now, anytime you get hurt, you come back with a vengeance, and Michael has that fire in his eyes and that bounce in his step. Falls back right there for the Jay. And then the last time down, he comes down, he squares up Jalen Rose, gives him the face, the step back. Oops, nope, I'm crossing you over. Now I'm a Jay. -U. Bam. And the foul a moment ago was number one on Reggie Miller. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By the 1998 Honda Accord, an Accord like no other. And by Reebok, creating possibilities one athlete at a time.
These aerial shots are provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, and we thank pilot Dan Thomas. That area you see right there is the construction site for the new arena for the Indiana Pacers to be opened a couple of seasons from now. It'll be called the Fieldhouse, and it's the first professional basketball arena. There's what it will ultimately look like. The first professional basketball arena that embraces the concept that's been so popular in baseball. Camden Yards, Jacobs Field, all the new retro-style ballparks. It'll have the feel of an old-style college field house, but with all the amenities that fans demand, the club seating and the luxury boxes and whatnot. Should be terrific. Here's Kukoc dealing to Longley and out to Rodman. The Bulls lead it by seven. Kukoc missing short. Larry Bird has come back in with Rick Smith, who got up to a great start with Reggie Miller not being able to get off offensively. They're going to have to get him some shots. Smith connects. Boy, they listen to you, don't they? He's off to a great start. You can't let him get lost out here. Big men sometimes will drift on you because you have to bring the ball to them, and sometimes they won't demand it. Michael starting to heat up after a slow start. Three straight now for Jordan after missing five of his first six. And play is stopped by a whistle. Now you watch Michael being guarded by McKee. Loves to come to that right hand and pull up in the middle. McKee just a little late getting there. Jordan switches it right through the net. He gets better about a quarter in this series so far. And right now, what I see in Michael Jordan and that little bounce and that little hop, I know from experience, he's about ready to go off. Foul on Rodman was his first. Pippen and Harper are back in. Best. And once again, play is stopped. The foul is on Michael, his first. One of the things we talked about was Travis Best's speed and quickness hurt the Bulls the other day. They went with a smaller lineup. Today, they're going with the bigger lineup. They're keeping Pippen on McKee. They're letting Michael guard Best. And they're keeping Ron Harper on Reggie Miller. The thing I'm noticing is Reggie Miller, he can only fade like that. That's good enough. Yeah, he's having a hard time curling into the middle, so he's fading on every screen, and Chicago is shooting the gap, trying to go over the top, and that time they got caught. Miller's first hoop is a three, and the Pacers are within four. Michael to answer. There it is. I'm, I'm telling you, he's real hot. Well, he missed five of his <laughs> first six shots, and he's made his last four right now. He's in one of those rhythms that great players get into. Reggie, nice feed from Best. <laughs> Chicago by five. Longley, off the Pippen pass. Weak side rotation that time, uncharacteristically very slow by Antonio Davis as Smith stepped out. Your big guy's got to step over and give some help. Reggie again, a little hook attempt. Comes up way short. He thought he was bumped a bit. Here comes Michael with best at his mercy. And they call a foul on Michael at 6-6. Six, six. He had the little guy, Travis Best, just 5'11", as the lone defender back. And he tried to give himself some room with the forearm, and they caught him. Keep your eye on his left arm and his left shoulder. Right there, the elbow, he gets it up. You very rarely see that call against Michael Jordan. Billy Oates with the emphatic call, but Travis Best giving him space. Watch the left arm. Right there, he gets it up. And you're watching the NBA on NBC. Now Reggie Miller is playing with a severe sprained ankle, so therefore he's only able to operate on really one side of the court. You watch him come down here on the right side. This is not slow-mo. That's just how slow he's moving. He curls into the lane, 
gets the left hand layup. But you see as he comes to the right side of the court, watch as he labors trying to curl. Gets caught up here, can't really get his balance. As he goes in for the hook shot, can't really push off that ankle. So watch Reggie Miller working at one side of the court, and when he gets to the right side, he'll fade probably to the corner for a J. With the Pacers down by seven, Best brings it across. Fires the jumper and hits it. Got a little screen to lose Jordan for just an instant. Rodman from Longley gives it up to Harper, who's fouled by Best. Folks, for complete coverage of the NBA Conference Finals, go online and step into the NBA.com arena. Listen to a live audio broadcast, view real-time stats or shot charts, and watch video highlights of every contest after the game. Look for news, photos, notes, and interviews. NBA.com, your ultimate guide to the NBA playoffs. Here's what that website looks like today. Now, Rick Smith has been a very important part of this team today offensively. But Isaiah, one of the things that's hurting him is the Bulls are really getting him involved in a lot of pick and rolls. They're stringing him out. They're throwing that ball to the corner, and he's not able to get back. They're getting that ball right to the middle of the floor, and they've punished the Pacers with that play today. The Bulls have. And Doug, you remember earlier in the season, Rick Smith had severe foot problems, and right now they're taking advantage of that. Travis Best really trying to make Michael expend some energy here on the defense. The key driving juggles it. It's Miller for three. And the Pacers are within three. Pippen. Fouled as he slices through the lane. Once again, you talk about Reggie Miller, the threat of him shooting the basketball. Watch him moving around. Ron Harper loses him for just a split second, and he nails it. And when Ron Harper runs down the floor, he looks at himself and he goes, I know I can't leave him. I've got to stay with him. And Doug, the thought process that goes through your mind when you have an injury, it eliminates all your other options. So you're not catching the ball to see if you can drive. You're only catching it to shoot. Here's Ahmad. And Doug, on that same note, he looked right, Ron Harper looked right over at Scotty Pippen and said, my fault, knowing he should never leave ready your own. Bob? After the miss, Pippen has it back, takes a leaning jumper as he's fouled. When you play Michael Jordan, you must make him work all the time. You have to hope that come fourth quarter, he's burned up some energy and becomes somewhat human. So what you see Travis Best doing, he's using screens. He's trying to penetrate, keeping Michael busy at both ends of the floor. The foul on Best came before the shot. Bulls put it into the side, and Longley misses. Rodman trying to keep it alive, but eventually it winds up in Smith's hands. Best around the Smith screen, and he travels. You know, Jalen Rose told us yesterday that they wanted to make Jordan work. Now, you watch as he gets a hand in, make Travis Best bobble the ball. But what amazed me, he was quick enough to get back into the passing lane. Timeout Chicago with 4.53 to play in the first half. I'm Hannah Storm in New York. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, we'll have more of Bob Costas' interview with Dennis Rodman. He's the NBA's best rebounder, and he knows his value to the Bulls. I must be something to this to this to this world, this community, or this this uh, this, or, this organization, the NBA. That I must be doing something really good for me to be still here and for people to like me and people to tolerate what I do. Without that, you really don't have any entertainment in the NBA. And as you saw earlier in the half, a Dennis and Bob have gotten together more than once this weekend. We understand that Bob asked for a 20-second timeout, but it wasn't granted. He rebounded well. Let's go back to Indianapolis. But perhaps not quite as well as Dennis, Hannah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. 
the studio is safer. Peter Vesey never roughed me up that way. Although he may have wanted to many times, he never did it. <laughs> I can't respond. I can only laugh. <laughs> Chicago ball after the timeout. Their lead is four. Now Travis Best is guard Jordan in the post. The Michael knows it. Michael eight. knows it. See, Reggie Miller came down to try to double team, but it was too late. He had banked it off the glass already. After missing five of his first six, Jordan has now hit five in a row. Harper on Miller, Antonio Davis with the screen, gets it back, pops the jumper. His Got game has gotten so much better being able to hit that medium range jump shot. You used to love for Tony Davis to step out and shoot that. That has become such a weapon for this team because you need another big guy who can shoot out there because Rick Smith sees so many double teams. Best again trying to contend with Michael. Knocked away as Antonio Davis came over with the help. You know, in that last bucket that Antonio Davis hit, Dennis Rodman bent down to tie his shoe up, and the pick and roll came. That's why he was so free at the free throw line, Doug. Pippen looking for somebody. It's Michael. At 6 6 to best 5 11. Miller over on the double team. Pippen lets fly. The Bulls are really shooting the ball well. This is so reminiscent of game three. You know what I think is interesting here? Larry Bird is going against his philosophy. He doesn't like the double team, but he realized that Michael Jordan is hot, so he's sending a man at him every time, which is freeing up their perimeter shooters. Smith's out the best. Quick touch pass over to an open McKee, whose jumper is short. Here comes Chicago. The Bulls are shooting 59% in this half. Michael again. Cross court to Pippen. Head fake. Longley open. Great ball movement and a Chicago basket. See, that's what happens when you double team. Now you get yourself rotating the people. You run at Pippen, he pump fakes you. He gets to the lane. You run at him and you kick for the easiest shot. That's why you don't like the double team. But the gamble that you take when you double team is you say, we're going to make everybody else beat you because we know Michael Jordan will beat us. Miller misses the hook. Harper rips his back the other way. Best wraps him up. Now you watch Jordan being guarded by Travis Best. Immediately he'll take him down to the post. He gets him there, turns away from the double team, banks it right off the glass. Now Indiana going against their philosophy, double teams Jordan. They swing it around. Pippen catch Davis coming, steps back, and drills the Jake. And then coming out again. You see Ron Harper here at the free throw line. Now you watch the good ball movement by Chicago. Jordan reads the double team. They swing. They kick. Look at Lonely draw Smith to the middle, sitting there wide open for the J. That's why Chicago is so good because of their spacing, but the willingness of Michael Jordan to give up the basketball and accept the double team. Jordan leaves the lineup with 2.48 to play in the half. This free throw upcoming right now by Ron Harper will be the 11th attempted in the half by the Bulls. Indiana is yet to go to the free throw line. That's an interesting substitution by Phil Jackson. They pushed it to a 10 point lead. Remember the other day in game three he rested Michael and they wasted an eight point lead at the end of the third quarter to gave the Pacers right back into the game. Let's see if the Pacers can make a dent into this lead. This is the biggest lead of the game for either side. Mark Jackson. Five seconds to shoot. Smith loses it. And they do not beat the shot clock. Larry Bird's team down 10. And Chicago looking to add to it. Longley hooks on Smiths. The Bulls by a dozen. Chicago well aware that Utah has swept Los Angeles. Jackson's pass finds Smiths. 
who has bumped and fouled, and he'll become the first pacer to go to the free throw line. And if, in fact, the Bulls wind up in a finals rematch with Utah, they'd like to get there as soon as possible because the Jazz will have home court advantage anyway, and right now they're resting up and waiting. So the longer this goes for a veteran team like Chicago, the worse it is for them, at least in theory, against Utah. That's why winning today and giving themselves a chance to wrap it up Wednesday night at home on NBC, beginning at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, is so important. So we'll see you Wednesday night from Chicago. Michael Jordan back into the game, so Phil really gave him a two-possession rest, realizing the importance now. They've got the Pacers on the ropes. They're down by 11 with Smith shooting this free throw to try to make it 10, which he does. But if the Bulls can push this to 14 or 16, it will be a big cushion for them going in at the halftime. Rodman snap pass to Michael who finally misses one interrupting a long hot streak. I didn't think that ball hit the rim. They got a new shot clock so that might have been a good thing there for the Chicago Bulls. It looked like it was an air ball must have skipped the back of the rim. Scotty to Kukoc big height advantage on Jackson slips it inside to Longley four on the 24 Pippen going to have to shoot it. It squirts out of his hand and a 24 second violation. The turnovers are even five apiece. Scotty Pippen went to Tony Kukoc. He said, take your time. You've got a mismatch. Back him down. Don't be so impatient. And see, with Pippen, Kukoc, and Jordan in the lineup, you're always going to have a mismatch. And Chicago just have to be patient enough to find which one. McKee on the drive, and the floater is good, plus there's a foul. Bob, I can't tell you how big this last minute and a half could be for Indiana. The Bulls have pushed it to a 12-point lead. McKee here with the great drive on the baseline. He loves to go left, even though he's a right-hand player. The little flip shot and the foul. Now he has a chance to cut it to seven. If they can get a couple defensive stops and they can go in maybe down five or seven, that would be in pretty good position based on how well the Bulls have shot in this first half. The foul on Longley was his third. Three-point play. Twelve point Chicago lead has been trimmed to seven. Michael over McKee and it's back to nine. You see Jordan loves to drive right and pull up right for that Jay McKee got him. He gave him a little hesitation went for again and then came back and hit the Jay going right. Jordan has 15. Jackson left alone. Drills a three. He got him pivoting back off into the passing lane, turned his head, didn't think Jackson could make the three, and Jackson drilled it. Now Michael Jordan will take the ball up the top against McKee. Let's see if they run at him and get it out of his hands. Michael has punished McKee at the end of quarters in all three games. He just waved Kukoc out of the corner because he wants that side clear. Here it is. Overshot and air ball. And there's the horn. Michael had 13 of his 15 first half points in the second quarter. The team that has led at the half has lost all three games so far in this series. Stay tuned for the Prudential Halftime Report. After these messages, you're watching the NBA on NBC. The Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan and company continue their quest for title number six. The Indiana Pacers. Larry Bird's team wants to dethrone the reigning NBA champions. It's the pivotal game five. The conference finals go prime time. Wednesday night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on NBC. This is the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential. Bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. 
It's halftime of game four with the Bulls leading the Pacers 54 to 48. Michael Jordan, despite that cut above his eye, leading all scores with 15 points. Rick Smith has 10 points to lead the Pacers. Reggie Miller, playing on the bum ankle, has eight points for Indiana. Hi, everybody. Hannah Storm along with John Sally, Peter Bessie, and Matt Gukas. And we're going to talk about the first half between these two teams just a little bit later on. But first, more of Bob Costas's conversation with Dennis Rodman. When people talk about the breakup of the Bulls, it seems like your question number four. Oh, Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan, Scottie, Scottie Pippen. Pippen. And then we'll see if all the other pieces of the jigsaw are there, then Dennis goes in last. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always on the bottom, it seems like. You know, I always tell people that I'm, I'm the opposite of Michael Jordan. Opposite of Michael Jordan. He's good. And I'm evil, but we seem to always come in, come in the middle for some reason. You know, Devin's advocate. You ever see that movie? Yeah. Okay. I don't think anyone thinks you're evil. I don't think anyone even thinks you're malicious. Most people think you have a big heart. They do think that sometimes you're irresponsible and self-absorbed. If you really look at it, I think that a lot of people respect me more than a lot of people that, that you give people credit for. I think people look at me and say, wow, I like that guy. No matter what he does, I like that guy. I must be, I must be something to this, to, this, to this world, this community, or this, this, uh, this, this organization, the NBA, that I must be doing something really good for me to be still here and for people to like me and people to tolerate what I do. Without that, you wouldn't have any entertainment in the NBA. Without Dennis Robert, you don't have the entertainment. You got the Kobe Bryant's that doing the dunks, Michael Jordan with the tongue, but you got the Dennis Robin with the whole plethora, you know, with the whole chameleon. See, I like that. that. I like that plethora. Okay. That's good. Okay. You got that. You got to have that. You got to have some type of, uh, you know, some distraction. You got to have that, uh, that bad boy image in the league. And the NBA has really taken a lot of that color out over the last 10 years. Are there some times when you just get starved for attention? Things haven't been stirred up enough around you, and you have to do something to draw that attention back to you, even if it isn't the best thing to do at that time? No, I don't really starve for attention. I starve for um, pleasure as far as I have to go and have to get some excitement somewhere because I'm bored. You know, this game can take you to so far in a level where I've been there. Okay, now let's let's go to let's go to floor number six. Let's see what that's what's got in store for me. Okay, that's me. I believe you know. that's hardwares and ladies lingerie. Oh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> Pippen on the move. Robin follows in emphatic fashion. Say what you want about what happens off the court. His game can be captivating. I think there's a lot of people who love your game, myself included, not just respecting it uh, in terms of its skill, but just enjoy watching you play because you play differently from anybody else and who don't mind you playing the court jester and who like the, the fact that a guy can be different. But there are times when you step over the line and then try to justify those things as just being Dennis, when in fact it's just misbehavior. I don't think it's misbehavior. I mean, I, I don't think it's anything that anybody else do in this league anything but I'm just watched differently and closely by the NBA they think that I am trying to show them up I mean how can one guy bring this pyramid this kingdom Caesar David Stern down from his throne how can you do that ain't no way in hell he's got all his Romans right there trying to spear me in the back you know as much as he can and say okay great you do it again we're gonna feed you to the Lions and those Lions are those three damn referees with the striped shirts with the whistle in their mouth okay so that's basically what it is other than mixing the lions with the zebras, that was an excellent metaphor. Okay. Extended out there pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Not as dumb as people think I am. That's <laughs> okay. So. Dennis Rodman actually playing a pretty smart game here in the first half. He stayed out of foul trouble, only one foul. He's played 19 minutes, has two rebounds, actually nine rebounds, two points, and one rather impressive takedown. When we return, we will talk about the first half in Indiana between the Bulls and Pacers. But first, a message from Prudential and a word from the NBA.
At halftime, the Bulls lead the Pacers 54 to 48. Time now to talk about the first half and Phil Jackson continuing to play musical chairs with his starting lineup between Tony Ku coach and Dennis Rodman. Matt Ku coach back as a starter today. How do you think it worked out in the first half? Well, Tony Ku coach responded with offense right on cue, and there's a feeling amongst the Bulls whenever Tony Ku coach hits his first shot, good things happen for Tony and Chicago. Too quick for Dale Davis off the dribble here, and then out of the set offense on the back cut, an easy one for Ku coach, and then spotting up on the perimeter. Terrific offensive start for Ku coach. Four Four out of six eight points and almost as big a part of this is it saves Dennis Rodman keeps him out of foul trouble and keeps him fresh for Antonio Davis when he comes off the bench nice competitive first quarter this game nice tight basketball game and only two points total between Reggie Miller and Michael Jordan but everybody knew that wouldn't last Peter you knew Michael Jordan was gonna bust out I mean he doesn't need a healthy eyebrow to browbeat his opponents and when he came back after getting stitches he hit five in a row in the second in the second quarter Miller on the other hand is hobbling he's got the dream injury he doesn't have to play defense but uh, <laughs> I know that is low, Marie Peter. is gonna kill me but you know his team really his team really needs him because they feed off his offense the uh, front line of the Pacers can only compensate for so long for his lack of offense they've got two chances to stay in this game in this series Hannah he needs a miracle recovery during halftime and the, they've got to get more more bulls in foul trouble than just Luke Longley so they can wear them down with numbers well speaking of Luke Longley a critical matchup there with Rick Smith and we said he would have to step up if Reggie Miller wasn't a hundred percent today what about the center matchup well in the first these big half? guys have been involved they're banging the one, the one another around they're coming in they're trying to establish where they're going to be in the post not letting not letting one get each position in. Luke gets the foul right here, but Smith has played better so far. He only has one foul. He has five rebounds and ten points, so he has a lot more leeway in the second half. You know, five more fouls you can use on Dennis, Michael, a couple more people. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, maybe they should start doing it, clamping down defensively. The Chicago Bulls shooting a blistering 59% in the first half of this game. Meanwhile, in tennis news, the French Open started today in Paris, and among those winning their first round matches were the top seeds, Pete Sampras and Martina Hingis. Eighth seeded American Venus Williams also won her opening match. There were several upsets on the men's side, including number five, Greg Rusedski, and number seven, Jonas Bjorkman. Our coverage from Roland Garros gets underway on Saturday. Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. And in baseball today, Mark McGuire did it again. The St. Louis Cardinals slugger homered against Colorado, his 25th of the season, setting a major league record for most home runs before June 1st. The old record of 24 was set last year by Seattle's Ken Griffey Jr. McGuire has been on a tear lately, hitting nine homers in his last seven games. Meanwhile, the Bulls lead the Pacers by six. We'll send you back to Indiana for the second half after these messages from your local station. This has been the Prudential Halftime Report, brought to you by Prudential, bringing strength and stability to America's families through insurance, health care, real estate, and financial services. Reggie Miller, who had 28 in game three, has eight at the half in game four. Michael Jordan leads everybody. With 15, he got only two of them in the first quarter, then exploded in the second quarter after he had to go to the locker room to have a cut above his right eye repaired. With Doug Collins and Isaiah Thomas, Bob Costas back for the second half of Game 4 at Market Square Arena. And quickly, let's take a look at the Miller Lite halftime stats. Bob, this game taking on so much of the complexion of Game 3. The Bulls had a huge first half in Game 3 where they led by four at the half. Today it's by six. They shot 53% in Game 3, only 39%. Today they should shoot almost 60%. Indiana did an excellent job on the offensive rebounding. First quarter they had 10, but when Rodman came in the game, they got none. And only five turnovers, one steal by the Chicago Bulls. That's another thing for us to watch. And when you look at the Pacers, Rick Smith has stepped up strong the first half. He's shooting four of seven from the field. Reggie Miller is starting to get involved. But I think they're going to have to get a little bit more scoring from their point guard. When you go to Chicago, on the other hand, Michael Jordan started off slow. Once he got the eye injury, really came back. You see him with the 15 points. And Scottie Pippen is also stepping up. Look at his shot chart before the injury. One for four from the field. And then when he came back after that, oh my. He was six for ten. Michael Jordan is hot. But in 19 minutes, he hasn't had a free throw attempt. So Chicago by half a dozen at the half. And the third quarter comes up after this. 
Ahmad Rashad back at Market Square winner. Now, Larry Bird has always been a man of few words, and he was at halftime, telling his team that they're in an excellent position, only down by six points. The only thing he told them was to be more aggressive. Now, Phil Jackson told his team more movement without the ball. The Pacers are getting them packed inside and not enough spacing to run their offense. He also told them on the defensive end to cut uh, down the penetration of the Indiana Pacers. And as far as Michael Jordan is concerned, he is still just wearing that tape, no stitches, and he's fine. Bob? Ahmad, thanks a lot. Quickly, let's take a look at the point differential through the quarters so far in this series. In games one and two, the third quarter was huge for the Bulls. In game three, Saturday here at Market Square, the Pacers, while not exactly destroying Chicago, at least were able to reverse it a bit and go up plus four and then win the fourth quarter by two points. They trail by six as we start the second half here in game four. Longley on the drive. Can't make it eight. Mullen has it. Now let's see if that ankle tightened up on Reggie Miller. Normally when you go and rest at halftime, that ankle swells up. Let's see what type of mobility he has. Smith's jumper over Longley. No. Rebound Rodman. Bulls thinking defense here starting Rodman. Who picks up his 10th rebound to start the half. Kippen to the hoop. Knocked away by Smits. So you watch Reggie in transition here. He's slowly limping, trying to get back. It's tough for him to push and off, get off that ankle. And he's guarding Michael Jordan right now, and Jordan will look to test him quickly. Longley, catch and shoot. That's a well-executed play. Rick Smith had to give help on the screen by Michael. Longley read it, just faded right back to the corner. Mullen for three. Way off. Rodman deals the outlet to Pippen. Michael is open. Good start to the third quarter for Chicago. Bird's going to need a 20-second timeout. The Bulls are coming out. They've got their defensive team on the floor. Hit two quick jump shots. We'll push this lead back up to 10, and Larry Bird doesn't like it. Let's take a look now at Luke Longley here. We want to watch him, and we're going to see right here. And as Michael comes off this screen, watch what Luke Longley does. Watch Rick Smith. He's going to have to think about Michael Jordan. He turns his head. Longley works right against his vision with the open jump shot. And then Michael Jordan, the last time down again, Reggie Miller having a very difficult time getting down the floor. They're cross-matched. Mark Jackson does not get there soon enough. Michael continues his hot shooting. The Bulls up by 10. Jackson around Pippen. He often took it right at Scotty in game three. Smith has position. Longley guessed wrong that time. He went on the baseline side. The pass was right to the middle, which led Smith right to the dump. Reggie on Michael. Jumper over him. Rodman with a great tip. It's a great tip because Dennis Rodman bots Dale Davis in. He bots him underneath the basket. So when the ball came off, he had enough space to tip him. And Pippen is hit with the block. That's three on Scotty. What I see on this play is an animated Dennis Rodman. The Rodman that we know with energy playing a little bit on that edge. But he goes right to the front of the rim on the miss and just out muscles the Indiana Pacer front line. And going back down the floor, you see that high step. And he's feeling good. Mullen. Michael takes him on a switch. And fouls it. That's Michael's third. See, even though it's his third foul, I don't think you can run the risk of taking the ball out of Rick Smith's hands because he's shooting it so well right now. They've got Harper now on Miller. Jackson into the lane. Dale Davis. 
Brings the Pacers back to within eight. The Pacers got to get some defensive stops, though. Right now, the Bulls are in that good offensive rhythm. Remember, they shot 59% in the first half, and they have not missed a beat here in the third quarter. Well, Chicago has made the decision that they're going to outscore Indiana, and Indiana has to match them with scoring opportunities. On the Bulls' turnover, the Pacers bring it back, trailing by eight. Mitz draws a double team. Jackson penetrates, kicks it back out to Rick for the baseline J. See, Bob, what you're getting there is Mark Jackson is throwing the ball in the post. Pippen is helping on the kick out. As Scotty's going to him, he's driving the ball to the basket and getting some dribble penetration. Longley misses with the left hand, and Mullen has board position on Rodman. Jackson pushes it back the other way. Inside, Davis is all alone. Indy's on a 6-0 run. And Mullen bumps Jordan to pick up the foul. Rick Smith really working hard in the post. You see Pippen going back. As he attacks, Mark Jackson penetrates. Look, Smith slides out to the open area where Mark Jackson can find him. Those are the little medium-range jump shots that Rick Smith has lived off this season. Smith has 14 on 6 of 8. The foul on Mullen was his third. Michael threw everybody, but can't finish it. Mullen kicks it out to Jackson. Smiths. He looks for the hoop, but it's short. Harper had trouble with the dribble. Got it back. And it's Chicago by six. Miller on the run. Misses off the glass. Jackson has it. Mullen along for three. A wide open look. Can't ask for more than that if you're Chris Mullen. Harper and Smith's fouled him. Look at Rodman with a smile on his face, trying to provoke something out of Smith's. Well, he knows Smith's right now has it going offensively, and one of Rodman's traits is to try to knock you out of the game mentally, try to ruin your concentration. It's important for Smith to keep his concentration. You see, he gives the hard foul, which is Indiana's philosophy. No free layups. You're not going to get anything. Harper takes it. Rodman comes over, and right now he's trying to say, hey, let me knock you out of your game a little bit. Let me see if I can get inside your head, make you concentrate about Dennis Rodman, and forget that you have to go down and score baskets. Harper cans the first. So the pace of this game is frenetic, and Larry Bird is going to take a timeout. I still think Indiana must continue to run like this. They, if they have any hopes, I think, of winning this game, they have got to wear the Bulls down. Miller Genuine Draft presents even more basketball. Games one and two belong to Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Game three, Reggie Miller. You see him with the gimpy ankle and all shooting the three. Michael answers it with a three of his own. Reggie Miller with the quick curl in the lane and the left-hand layup. And Michael, once again, the quick pull-up and the fading jump shot on Derek McKee. Now, who's winning the battle today? Michael Jordan, 8 of 17 for 17 points, no free throw attempts. And Reggie Miller, only eight shot attempts, eight points, and he has not been to the free throw line today either. In recognition of this look inside the game, Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. Harper puts the Bulls up by eight. 
See, I think Larry Bird's going to have to make a decision here to bring Jalen Rose in this game. Chris Mullen is struggling. He's only one of seven, although he has seven rebounds. But I think they need the ball handling and scoring of Jalen Rose. Jackson coming off several screens into the lane. Can't hit it. But Smith's can. His best game of the series by far. More aggressive, more demanding of the ball. 16 points. Jackson battling with Harper. Longley and Smith go to the floor. And it's Indiana ball. Jackson and Harper, one-time teammates with the Clippers, really going at one another. That was a good defensive tap by Jackson. Anytime Jackson can get his body on you and get his hands inside you, he's very strong. And he was able to tie up Ron Harper and tap it on the backside. Miller. Got it. Two-point bucket just inside the line. Chicago by four. That was such a difficult shot. Ron Arthur with a hand in the face. Reggie Miller still buried it. See, again, that shot was on the fade. You got to get up on Miller and make him run. Michael slings it out to Harper, who traveled. Now you watch Miller coming down, and he's limping. He's going to get set, but he can't curl, so you want to get up on him. Harper doesn't make him curl. He fades to the corner and knocks down the J. Reggie for three. Just short. Pippen has it. Three on two if they push it. Scotty to oh. Boy, there's a swing. A three-pointer that could have cut it to one. Instead, it ignites a break, and they're down six. Mullen through a crowd. Got to shoot it quickly. 24-second violation. Against the Chicago Bulls, you cannot hold the ball. Chris Mullen is holding the basketball and trying to get his own shot. He's one for nine now. And again, Jalen Rose only played seven minutes in the first half. He was only one for two. So they're getting no production from their three spot at all today after a huge game from Jalen Rose. They gave him 15 in game three and in the victory. last by the Bulls. Now you, Pippen is pointing at Mullen, but the officials didn't see it that way. <laughs> now you watch Reggie Miller guarding Jordan in the post. He's trying to keep his hand in Jordan's shot pocket. He won't let him bring the ball down to get to his pocket to bring that shot up because he knows he can't move his feet. Pippen steps in front and picks it off. Jackson is back, but it's a two-on-one with Michael. Look out! And Jackson fouls him. Now, both Jordan and Jackson knew what was coming on that play. That's why neither one of them responded. Jordan knows that every time that he goes to the basket on a fast break situation like this, they're going to take the hard foul. He accepts the challenge, walks back to the line. And again, Isaiah, the one thing you don't want to do is let Michael Jordan get one of those monster dunks of his because those are the great quieters of the crowd, especially on the road. So you take the foul and you make him make two free throws. This is his first two free throw attempts of the game. For the 10 time scoring champ and five time MVP. NBC's must see Thursday is great this week, beginning with Friends, followed by Just Shoot Me, Seinfeld, Veronica's Closet, and E.R. That is must see TV Thursday on NBC. Remember now, game three, Bulls up eight, with about four minutes to go in the third quarter. Phil Jackson rested Michael Jordan, the Pacers tied the game. I don't think you'll see that today. A whistle away from the ball. See, Reggie Miller came down two plays ago, and he told Hugh Evans, watch Harper holding me. Watch him holding me. Ronnie Nunn picks it up on this side. Harper's grabbing. The officials are communicating with each other, and they got the call. 
It's on Harper. It's his first. Remember late in game three when Harper fouled Miller hard and almost sent him sailing into the Indiana bench and several Pacers stood up. Antonio Davis actually said to Harper, you cross this line and your butt, or words to that effect, is mine. <laughs> and, and speaking of Antonio Davis, he and Jalen Rose had huge games in game three and neither one of them have played that much today. Dale Davis spinning and spinning too much, shuffling the feet and traveling. Ahmad Rashad tells us that Reggie Miller turned to one of the officials after they nailed Harper with a foul and actually said, thank you. Might be some sarcasm involved. Thank you for finally spotting one in Reggie's view. Michael takes him into the lane and hits it. You got to go double team him. You can't let Reggie Miller stay down there alone. It's a 10 point game again. Mullen is open and shoots it long. Terrible shooting day for Chris Mullen, but not for Rick Smith, who's been hot all afternoon. And he's the one that's kept him in this game in the third quarter, down eight with three minutes to go. 18 now for Smith. Pippen from Rodman. Here's Longley. And again, it's Chicago by 10. fouled him. That was a great adjustment by Rick Smith. He moved, moved Longley up, then came around him, and Longley got the foul. Now you look at the last two baskets by Chicago. Jordan using his strength, backing Reggie Miller down. Reggie can't fight him off, doesn't have the leverage because of the ankle. Now you watch Longley, who likes to come left, drives left on Rick Smith, takes the long step around Jackson, and hooks it right in the hole. And you're watching the NBA on NBC. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Miller Lite, who reminds you that a Miller time can be anything you want as long as it feels good. By Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And by Snickers. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? The aerial shots of Indianapolis are provided today by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Our thanks again to pilot Dan Thomas. Here's a Madra shot. All right, thanks, Bob. You haven't seen Steve Kerr playing in the second half, and Doug, you pointed out earlier, late in the second half, he was doing some limping out on the court. I just found out he has a contusion to his left hip, so he's sitting on the bench with ice on it, trying to keep it loose. But as you see, he has not played as of yet, Bob. Ahmad, thanks. They may not need him today. But he has been so important. The play he made late in game three, even though Chicago came up short, when he flew in for the rebound off a missed Pippen three, grabbed it in midair in the lane, and dished it back out to Michael, who hit a three, was just a tremendously heady play. The foul which sent Smith to the line was Longley's fourth. Bob, once again, I think you see Phil Jackson's philosophy here. After losing that eight-point lead in game three, it's a nine-point lead right now as Smith is shooting his second free throw to try to make it eight, realizing they've worked so hard to get this lead. He does not want to let them close quickly to finish this third quarter. Michael has it with Jalen Rose on him. Scott Burrell, Michael, five on the 24, throws all over him. Kukoc has it go through his hands. They won't beat the shot clock. Jackson. Mark goes by him. 
Dishes out to Rose. Now you got Kukoc guarding Smith in the low post. Kukoc will try to use his foot speed to front him. Let's see what Smith does. Four seconds to shoot. Jackson will. Misses it long. It didn't hit the rim. Kukoc has it. Kukoc with the jumper from the foul line. Plus the foul. You know what this also does is this makes either Rick Smith's guard Dennis Rodman or Tony Kukoc. If he's going to guard Kukoc, Kukoc out on the perimeter will do this all day. You saw Antonio Davis tried to help him out, but it was too late. So this small lineup, if Kukoc can front the post and take the ball out of Smith's hands, will be very effective. See, in fronting the post with Kukoc, Smith has to get in deeper, Doug. So when Kukoc does front him, he'll be closer to the rim for the lob. Jackson looking for help. The foul on Antonio Davis a moment ago was his first. Jackson gets it back from Smith and lays it in. Michael out to Burrell and now Kuko. Michael again. Number 23 has 23. See, that's not fair. He drove baseline, pulled four guys to him, hung in the air till he found an open guy, then tracked the ball down and got it back and made the shot. And underneath under all of that, Rodman got hit in the head by an Antonio Davis elbow. Smith poked away by Kukoc, and Tony fouled him. I say, now watch Michael Jordan here. He's going to get hemmed in on the baseline. Look how many Pacers are down there with him. Five guys in the paint. And he says, get me the ball back. And he turns and hits the jump shot. See, what's happened is through his career, he's seen so many double and triple teams. He realizes when he gives the ball up, don't take himself out of the play. Seek the ball back. See, Kukoc is using his foot speed, and what Smith has to do when he gets it underneath, he's got to be patient and hold it. He can't go right away, and he's got to let Kukoc settle down, be a little bit more patient in the post like Michael Jordan is or Carl Malone. Whenever you have a smaller guy guarding you, take your time down there. Smith has 21. The Bulls led by six at the half. They're up by nine now as the third quarter winds down. Jalen Rose fouled Michael Jordan. That's one on Rose. But will send Michael to the line as the Pacers are in the penalty. Tonight on Dateline, a decorated Air Force officer had a love affair that sent her career into a tailspin. Was she the victim of a double standard? That's tonight on Dateline. I honestly do not know the answer, but I'm sure that Stone Phillips and Jane Pauley do. A 10-point Chicago lead. Good game. Twenty-three for Rick Smith. Smith's a big possession right here. If Michael can hit this shot, it'll put him up ten. If the Pacers can hold, it will give him a nice little lift to start the fourth period. Michael fires in and out, and there's the horn. Well, the Bulls led by six at the half. They lead by eight now, but it would have been a whole lot worse for Indiana without Rick Smith's. 13 of his 23 points came in the third quarter. We're back after these words from your local station. You're watching the NBA on NBC. 
This copyrighted telecast of the National Basketball Association may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the NBA. Rick Smith's having an excellent ball game for the Indiana Pacers. You see, he's 9 of 14 with 23 points and doing it a lot of different ways. The step out in the open jump shot. The follow-up on the offensive backboard. The little jump shot from about 17 feet and then the slip of the screen and the jump hook over Scotty Pippen. Now this is excellent, what Rick Smith has been able to do. But Jalen Rose and Chris Mullen are combined two for 12 today. Travis Best in the ball game for Mark Jackson. Let's see if he can provide some speed and quickness for a big fourth quarter finish. As the fourth quarter begins, Jordan is on the bench for Chicago, and Smith's on the bench for the Pacers. Antonio Davis with the left hand. And Steve Kerr has returned despite the tender thigh. See, I like when Indiana has Davis in the game because he brings them the energy and the emotion. Two coach to Rodman who slings it out to Pippen and now Kerr for three. Got it. Now that's a pro. Sits there the whole game with a bruised hip, steps right back on the floor and drills a three. What that's that, a pro. What that also does is buy another minute's rest for Michael Jordan. Since they're in front by nine. Jalen Rose answers with a three of his own. See, these are the two players who were big for you the other night. Davis and Rose. Let's see if they can step up and be big for them again this afternoon. Burrell. Rebound Rose. And there's a whistle from Bill Oates, a Chicago foul. See, on that, on that last play, let's watch the ball movement of the Chicago Bulls. The penetration, the kick, the movement around the horn, right in his spot, bam, wide open three. Now you come back with the Pacers again, ball movement, fake, Jalen Rose takes his time, lines it up, and drills a three. Back live, the foul on Kukoc was his third. See, Mullen is back in the game for Reggie Miller because Reggie's having a hard time. Jalen Rose is not having a hard time. He hits his second straight three. Bob, you see what's happening right now is Jalen Rose and Antonio Davis is stepping up. Jalen Rose knocked Tony Kukoc down, then drove the lane. That's the plan of toughness right now for the Pacers. Kukoc is all alone, though, and that quiets the crowd just a bit. Championship experience. You keep your poise. The emotional surge on Jalen Rose's shooting. Kukoc and Kerr have both answered. Four three-pointers in the last minute or so. Mullen inside of Burrell. No basket. He hit him before the shot. It's Chicago by six. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Butler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. By the full line of vehicles from Mitsubishi, built for living. And by American Express. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, American Express helps you do more. Another shot from pilot Dan Thomas and the folks in the Goodyear blimp. The Pacer bench has been so vital to their success all season long. The emotional toughness of Antonio Davis in the post against Dennis Rodman and Jalen Rose with back-to-back -back big threes to give his team some energy and some life. And they're going to need the bench to finish this game out strong with Reggie Miller not being 100%. You see what their bench has done at home. They've shot 47% at home and on the road 39%. And that's what you normally see. Your starters play much better on the road and your bench plays much better at home. Today, you see what they've done, plus eight. 
You know, Doug, Rick Smith's playing as well as he's playing. I know Larry Bird doesn't like to play the three big guys together, but I think he should try to play Rick Smith because Mullen is struggling to play Davis, McKee, and Smith together. Foul before the shot, and it's Burrell again. His second. The one thing I like about this lineup, you've got Best, who's a ball handler with quickness. You've got Jalen Rose, who can handle Mullen, who can shoot, McKee, who can handle the ball, and Davis's toughness. So you have a very mobile team. I think he needs defense and mobility out on the floor right now. And the other's got to pick up the scoring. Rose working on Burrell. Kukoc coming over. A nearly impossible shot won't fall. Here is Michael back in the game. And an immediate whistle at the other end. Michael got a pretty good rest out of this. Well, he got two and a half minutes, and they only lost two points because Kerr and Kukoc both hit big three-point shots. Jalen Rose and Scott Burrell are having a little battle of their own. But Jalen Rose will compete. That, that is why I love him as a basketball player. You see him defending Jordan. He's not backing away. He respects him, but he's going to compete against him. You're not going to get anything free on Jalen Rose. Michael Jordan hit with the offensive foul. That's his fourth. So you look at Jalen Rose, and he's not backing down. He's not conceding from Jordan. You watch him guarding him. He's going to take the shot. You know, out of the Fab Five at Michigan, you talk about Jawan Howard and Chris Webber, but this guy has a chance to be the true star. McKee. Won't fall. Burrell has it. Got to go strong and finish that shot. No flippers now. Either get to the line or finish. Kerr from Michael. Into the lane he goes. Hold on. He was fouled as he made his move. Now that's four on Mullen. I think the question is, have we seen the last of Reggie Miller today? Because Isaiah, well, here he comes off the bench right now because I was getting ready to say, the longer he sits there, the tougher it's going to be for him to get warmed up again with that ankle. Yeah, at the half, we talked about it. We said, let's watch and see if that ankle gets tight. Now, when you have an ankle injury like that, you have to keep pushing and you have to keep running because your foot acts as a pump and it pumps the blood up out of your foot and it lessens the swelling. Michael, fade away. Got it. Just a blink of the eye between the time he caught it, made the move, and released it. His ability to fade back and create distance. His shot is almost impossible to block unless you come from behind. Pacers trail by eight. Davis spins on Rodman. Out of bounds to the Pacers, no foul. See, they have, they have no post play right now, Doug. Although Antonio Davis is good in the post, he's being guarded by Dennis Rodman. You can't go to McKee on Kukoc because the size is the same. So you're missing Rick Smith's inside to give you that strength, and he's playing really well right now. And when you look at Chicago out there, they have no big people. I think what would happen is if he would come back in with Rick Smith, I think you would Phil Jackson immediately counter with Luke Longley. Well, let's see if he does because here comes Smith. No luck on the shot for Indiana. Kempin just back in. Knocked away from Michael by Best. And into the hands of Rose. Travis Best is open, but misses the three. And Rodman is there to one-hand the rebound. Fourteen rebounds for Dennis. Michael, there was contact and Rose raises his hand. Three on Jalen. Chicago by eight. Just under seven minutes left. Now you see Michael Jordan has 26 points, got off to a slow shooting start. But the battle that he and Jalen Rose is going through right now, you see Jordan backing him down. Jalen is not going to concede. He's a tough competitor. Jordan shoots him with an elbow. Jalen says, okay, next time you try to go around me, there's one for you. 
Now here's the elbow again from Michael and the retaliation to come from Rose. As he goes up, he shoots him with one real quick. Jalen shoots him with one back. That's basketball. That's two tough competitors. I think Michael Jordan right now respects Jalen Rose. You saw Michael with the four fouls. The last time Michael Jordan fouled out of a game was November of 1991 against the Supersonics. And there it is. Folks in the truck all over it. A little miscommunication that time between Michael Jordan and Luke Longley. Luke stepped up to set a screen, and Michael tried to pass him the ball at the pinch post. And Michael said, my fault, Luke. Now, I think this is a good matchup for the Pacers because Rick Smith comes back on the floor, who's a better offensive player, playing against Longley. And they immediately go to him, the basket, plus one. You got to keep him on the floor because what it does, Doug, as you said, Phil Jackson now will come back with Luke Longley, which takes Tony Kukoc off the floor, who's a better offensive player, and you need to score right now. You see Smith backs him down and uses his size to go over him with the J. Meanwhile, five on Longley. This is the most patience I think that I've seen with Rick Smith in this series so far. Anytime he's seen the double team, he's given the ball up. He's starting to punish that double team now. He's big enough to take that ball through people. You remember in the New York series, we talked about this earlier in the game, how he started slow against Patrick Ewing in the Knicks, was three for 19, and then he settled into the series. They're back within five. The key on Jordan, jumper over it, spins out. Reggie Miller has it. Pacers looking to make a move. Best pulls up and hits. Chicago by two. down by Harper. The mismatch, Pippen on best, they spot it, and he scores over the top of him. You could see it all the way. Michael saw Scott, he said, get in the post, and he got him the basketball off a second shot opportunity that Ron Harper ran down the miss. Best around a Davis screen. Kicks it to McKee and now Smiths. He feels it, but not this time. Not many guys, seven foot four, have a touch so soft and confidence in a jumper from that kind of range. Bob, I think what would be important to watch right here to see if in these last five minutes can Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan sustain their energy because they played a lot of minutes. You see that turnover right there may be a sign of fatigue. Jordan lost it. There was a little bit of contact. The officials let it go. That's Michael Jordan's sixth turnover today. And a foul off the ball. And if it's on Longley, he's finished. And Phil Jackson is screaming at Luke Longley. And he said, Luke, how could you do that? How could you be so dumb? How could you get baited into that? Now you watch this. He's battling Smith. He's battling Smith. He's so conscious of Reggie Miller. He gives him a shove. Running on the back official catches it. And Phil Jackson responds and said, Luke, what are you thinking about? Nothing to say to Longley now, but good day, mate. Well, now Phil Jackson's got to make a decision. If I come back in with Ku coach, I've got a smaller, more offensive-minded team. Bill Winnington has struggled trying to play him. So who is Phil Jackson going to go to? I think you might see Dennis Rodman on him now down the stretch of this game, the last 445 as Ku coach comes back into the game. Then what we'll see is a, a replay of game three where Antonio Davis totally dominated Tony Ku coach inside. And it'll be interesting to see if Travis Best can read the mismatches, does he decide to exploit Smith or Davis? That was the 15th foul, so the Pacers are shooting. 
The Pacers have only committed three. Remember how critical fouls were. The Bulls missed four of eight free throws in that furious finish the other day. After Miller's free throws, it's again a two-point game. Jordan threw a crowd. It's short, but Rodman, he can't hit it. Here come the Pacers, and here comes the crowd. A basket here could tie it. A three could give them the lead. Now they have two coach Garden Smith. McKee for the lead. Indiana by one. Pippen, there's a whistle. No one could hear it. The crowd is so loud. Phil Jackson wanted a timeout. Scotty took the ball down the floor and didn't see it and used some clock, so they only have 15 seconds as they come out of this timeout. Indiana's on an 11-2 run. There's the last piece of it. McKee's three, which gives them the lead. You're watching the NBA on NBC. The Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan and company continue their quest for title number six. The Indiana Pacers. Larry Bird's team wants to dethrone the reigning NBA champions. It's the pivotal game five. The conference finals go prime time. Wednesday night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on NBC. Keep your eye on Derek McKee right here. Watch the blow that he's going to take to his head from his teammate. He rolls over. This is right before he comes down and hits a three-point shot. Where am I? Then he almost gets run over by a pack of bulls. He comes to the other end, and he says, you know what? I can still make the open shot, though, and he buries the three to give the Pacers the one-point lead. Indiana has hit nine of 16 three-point attempts in this game. They once trailed by 12. They lead now by one. Jordan. McKee wants to make him make jump shots. Keep him in front of him. Don't let him get to the rim. He doesn't make that jump shot. Rebound Antonio Davis. Keep the pace of the game up. This is how you're going to win the game if you're Indiana. Keep the pressure on them. Five on the shot clock. McKee, no look pass to Davis, who's fouled by Rodman. And Reggie Miller was begging for that basketball. He came up on the screen on the weak side, wide open, but Travis Best was looking the other way. You watch him come around here on the curl, and he's clapping. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Get it right here. Oh, oh, oh. See, now, one of the things that's happened now with Indiana, they've put about four or five different players, as we see Davis miss the free throw. Bob, they've guarded Michael Jordan with Mullen. They've guarded him with Miller. They've guarded him with Rose. And now they've guarded him with McKee. They're trying to keep a fresh body on him. Derek McKee at 6'10 will force Michael Jordan out on the perimeter to try to make him make jump shots. Antonio Davis comes up empty. The foul a moment ago on Rodman was only his second. That's the same guy that made the two crucial free throws at game three. Scotty Pippen just Jordan. Gave. Hold on, a foul. Pippen just gave Reggie Miller an elbow right to the head. He was trying to post him up. Miller stuck his head in there, and Scotty Pippen shot him right with the elbow on top of it. You watch Pippen posting up here, and Miller stick his head in. Bam. Oh my, <laughs> as he runs it. <laughs> foul on McKee, his second. The Pacers are one foul away from being in the penalty. The Bulls are already there with 3.01 on the clock. Now Steve Kerr being back in the game. Pippen to Kukoc. Tony Kukoc has been huge at various times in this game. See, they have the best offensive scores in the game 
and Ku coach Pippen, Jordan, and Kerr because Chicago understands right now that they got to keep scoring. Now they've come back with Steve Kerr to play best. He hurt them with screen roll and penetration in game three. They've got Harper out of the game because Kerr's a better shooter. I think you got to put it right back in Smith's hands against Ku coach. Best had a different idea. That's that screen roll play that hurt them that we showed at the top of the game in our Showtime feature. Kerr just does not have the quickness, but they need his shooting. The 10th Indiana three-pointer of game four. They lead it by two. Pippen has it poked away. Out of bounds, two. Indiana. Bob, one of the things here, Reggie Miller is one of the best in the league. If he catches the ball off the screen and he knows you're in the penalty, he will throw his body in you. Let's see if he tries to do that to Michael Jordan. Again, they're going with best down the stretch as they did in game three instead of Mark Jackson. It's Smith's on the run. It spins out. Rebound Rodman. Sixteenth board of the game for Dennis Rodman. Jordan thought about a three, gives it up to Kerr. Michael for Kukoc. It's Chicago in front again. Of Tony Davis twice. He's a big guy who's not used to playing guys that can shoot the ball out there. And he gave Kukoc two good looks and he buried them both. Indiana asked for time. Kukoc has 18. He's hit 8 of 10 from the floor. It's the Bulls by a point with 135 left. Moments ago, Phil Jackson all over Hugh Evans contending that Travis Best's foot was on the line and the three-pointer should actually have been a two-point basket. We'll get a look at it and we'll show you Travis Best's foot right here on the line. And we can even get a better look. I think we'll be able to see it from a different angle here. But his foot right there, just his toe barely on the line. And we see it right there. And that should be a two-point shot. You know, and if you're an official and you're watching that and you have to look at it real quick, you're looking at Travis Best with black shoes on and you got the black line, it's kind of hard for you to take a quick look and, and decide which is which. Trailing by one, the Pacers put it in play. They have Michael Jordan on best to take away the penetration. Smith comes out the screen for him. Best into the lane, the floater is short. Loose ball battle won by Pippen. See, Smith had Kukoc's pit deep into the lane, but Best missed him because he was dribbling the basketball. That's one of the problems with Best as a point guard, that he dribbles. Jordan against McKee. Four seconds on the shot clock. It'll be Michael, and it'll be Chicago by three. That was Michael's first basket since 8.07 remained in the game. He has 28. Indiana season riding this last 40 seconds. He's best dribbling the ball too much again. You see Smith's flash again that time wide open. But Best took it to the hole and banked it in. With 33.5 on the clock, it's a one-point game. Timeout Chicago. They now have two remaining plus a 20. Indiana has two timeouts left. Michael Jordan squares himself up and he uses his dribble to get his rhythm. Drives it to the point, raises up and makes the jump shot to put his team up three. But Travis Best, composure off the bench. He's got Michael Jordan. He splits the defense. He goes by two coach. The high arcing shot off the glass. And we got us a one point game. Another memorable Memorial Day game shaping up for these teams in this decade. 
The Bulls swept the Pistons and went past the team that had haunted them and on to their first NBA championship in 91 on Memorial Day. Two years later, Michael with 54 in game four against the Knicks. And then in 95, it was the Pacers' turn, the game in which Rick Smith hit the game winner, a contest that saw four lead changes in the final 13 seconds. Remember the exchange of what seemed to be game winners, first by Penny Hardaway and then by Smith's. Here at Chicago by one as they put it in play. You see Bulls take a link to the floor, not half court. Kerr, a great free throw shooter. And now Kukoc. Hold on. There's an offensive foul. An illegal screen is called. And the Pacers are going to get the ball with 21.8 on the clock. It's on Rodman, and it's his third. And Rodman went to set the screen. He was trying to free Jordan. And he kind of leaned in a little bit. You see him here at the top of your screen? And watch the shoulder. With a little slight, little slight shoulder. Kind of touch at this point in the game, however. It was an offensive foul. And we'll be back after these messages and a word from your local station. Dennis Rodman is going to get called on the offensive foul. They're going to run a staggered double screen. It's Kerr sets the first one. Michael's going to come up. Now watch Rodman's left shoulder. He is on the move and he hits Derek McKee. That's a good call because he threw his left shoulder out and created the contact. Now Phil Jackson obviously doesn't like it. He feels like he's gotten two tough calls here. One on the three-point shot. This one on the moving foul. Now can Indiana take advantage? Best brings it out of the backcourt, confronted by Jordan. Reggie Miller, Harper on him. Reggie, on the move, finds Best, deals it out to McKee. And it's knocked out of bounds by Jordan, who comes over to get a piece of it with 6.4 on the clock. Now, Indiana runs a great set play here to fill, to uh, free up Reggie Miller. Rodman or Kukoc must switch this, or Pippen, and then watch McKee, the inbounder, stepping back in. Indiana has a timeout. They elect not to use it. McKee looking. Gets it in for Miller. Batted away. Grabbed by Pippen, and they have to foul him. Harper and Reggie Miller. This has been brewing since game three. When Harper fouled Miller hard late in the game. Right in front of the Chicago bench. Now Pippen's going to go to the line. What would be crucial here is if technicals are called. That would throw everything off. And that's what the officials are talking about. If Pippen goes to the line, even if he makes two, Indiana, a great three-point shooting team, would still have an opportunity to tie. See, what happened here is Reggie Miller gets called for the foul, and you see Harper pull Reggie Miller into the bench and then push him off, and Reggie Miller goes back at him. Man, you can't do that. You can't run the risk of a technical in this situation, no matter the provocation. The officials may have decided, we haven't seen an indication yet, they may have decided that they don't want this game and the possibility of a trip to the NBA Finals to be decided by a technical foul shot. Well, you got Hugh Evans right there who's explaining it. He's been in these situations before, and he knows how to handle this type of situation. It's very emotional right now for the players. He's been there, so he's going to make the right call. He's going to settle everybody down, walk him to the free throw line, and the players will decide the game, not the officials, and that's the way it should be. Scotty Pippen has had a great game. 12 points, 10 assists, 7 rebounds, and a pair of steals. But he's only 2 of 5 from the foul line. And on Saturday, he was only 3 of 7. Derek McKee walks over and whispers something into his ear. 
Remember last year in the finals when Pippen walked up to Carl Malone as he prepared to shoot crucial free throws and whispered, the mailman doesn't deliver on Sunday. A miss. And see, I can tell you what's going through Scottie Pippen's mind as a player. You're sitting there concentrating, and it's not butterflies that's in your stomach. It's a big whale that's swimming around in there. Now, I'd put Antonio Davis on Rodman. Rodman too quick for Smith here. You don't want to give up a second shot. Missed them both. Loose ball, out of bounds. Who's got it? Jump ball. Now Hugh Evans says, wait a minute. He motions Ronnie Nunn over and may overrule him, and he does. He overrules him and gives the ball to Indiana with 2.9 seconds. And Larry Bird uses his last timeout. Michael Jordan is going to come over the top of this loose ball, and you're going to see... His left hand looks like he knocks that ball out of bounds very close. Now, Ronnie Nunn did not have a good look at it. Hubert Evans on the other side saw it. Let's watch again. Watch Michael's hand here. That's definitely off Michael's hand. He and McKee were wrapped up there. Whoa, that's close. I, man, that is really close. You know, we have the option to sit here and watch it from about three different replays. Now, Indiana's getting their third chance here to try to win this game. See, I think you got to go back to Rick Smith right into the hole. He's being guarded by Kukoc to take your chances there. If Indiana scores here, this series might very well go the limit. If they don't score, you have to think it's very likely that the Pacers will be finished Wednesday night in Chicago, where the Bulls are 27 and 2 in the playoffs over the last two years. So these next 2.9 seconds may be worth several days for the Bulls in terms of rest. If they can end it now, they pick up important time to rest up for Utah. Let's go back to the scuffle in front of the Chicago bench. Let's see if someone moves off the Indiana bench. Watch the left of your screen. Right there, somebody. That's it Jaylen could have been Jalen Rose. Right there, that's Jalen Rose. Did not advance beyond midcourt. And there's Rick Carlisle, one of the assistants, coming over saying, get back here. Now, it's possible that Rod Thorne We'll review that tape, and it is possible that Jalen Rose will not be a participant Wednesday night in Chicago. Well, it all depends on how technical you want to be. The rule says that you can't come on the floor. He did not necessarily cross the line. He went up the sideline. So we'll see. You look at Rod Thorne there on the left and David Stern with the yellow tie on. We'll see how they rule. Indiana, no timeouts left. They've got to get the ball in. 2.9 seconds. And a delay of game warning on Chicago. They just wanted to get a look at Indiana's setup. Ku coach is on Smiths. Jordan is on Best. Harper's on Miller. McKee gets it in the middle for the win. It's the Four tenths of a second. Like he's ready to cry. 
look at Reggie once again. He got away with a little bump on Michael. He got really open. I can't believe he got that open on that play, knowing they're probably going to go to Reggie. But where's the limp? No. He forgot he's got a bad ankle. With too much adrenaline flowing through your body, that's what you say, I love this game. That's what it's really all about right there. And you look at Larry Bird, who's been there before. Nothing to it. I've done that about 20 times in my career. Come on back over here, fellas. Yeah, well, let me telestrate his stomach. <laughs> Well, that's an almost unbelievably placid demeanor, well, considering the fact that Market Square Arena is a complete madhouse. Bob, they put seven tenths of a second. You can still get a catch and shoot. At three tenths, it can only be a lob to the basket. So the Pacers got to be smart here. They've got to be ready to switch anything so you can't get a quick catch and shoot. After the basket, it showed four tenths. They restore three tenths and put it at point seven. The two big misses by Scottie Pippen at the free throw line set the stage. Had he made them both, the best the Pacers could have done was to tie on that three. Now they lead by two. Now they've got their biggest man, Rick Smith. He's got to get up all over Tony Kukoc because they do not have time to throw it back to him for the shot. Now, Michael Jordan likes to take it down into the post right here and seal his man and shoot the fadeaway, Jay. Who coach to Michael at the buzzer? It spins out. It spins out. Disappointed. He is so great and he has done it so many times that everyone at Market Square held his or her breath as he let it go, and you cannot come much closer without making it. Now you look at Phil Jackson's face, oh, right in the hole, and he's saying right now, we know we got a series going on our hands because Indiana didn't die. And you look at Larry Bird. Been here before, done that again. No pressure. Ahmad Rashad right. is with Reggie Miller. All right, thanks, Bob. Reggie, they say that the playoffs don't start till the home team loses. You guys refuse to let that happen. Well, you know, we were behind the eight ball all game. We were always playing catch up. You know, our bench came in and played fantastic for us once again. Travis Best hit some big shots for us. And we never wanted to quit in this game. We understood that. They were going to come out. This is the game they wanted to go back home 3-1, but we never wanted to quit. How confident were you going down to that last shot? You had been idle for a while and come in and hit that big shot. Well, as long as I can get my feet set and have a, a shot to look at the, uh, the bucket, uh, I'm always going to give myself a chance. I saw that Michael was traveling a little bit, yelling at me, but I stayed focused and, and focused on the rim and my rhythm, and the rest is history. So much fight in this team. You guys kept getting down. Every time they'd make a run, you guys would come right back and stayed in the game with a chance to win it. Hey, we wouldn't have the second-best record in the East if this team quit. You know, there's been times when we've been down 15, 20 points, and we always seem to find, find a way to win the ball game. we got great veterans on this team, uh, coached by a legend. Things like that happen. A great performance, Reggie, on that sore ankle. How's it feeling now? I'm done. I really shouldn't have been out here playing, but I really just wanted to play half the game and try to get the, get the guys to lift, but coach just left me out there. Why, I don't know, but I'm glad he did. I think the reason was that last shot, which you <laughs> nailed, Reggie. Thank you. All right, congratulations to you. We'll see you in Chicago. All right. All right. Back to you, Bob. Well, Ahmad, we know for sure that we'll play at least six in this series. 
We'll see you at 9 Eastern, 8 Central from Chicago on Wednesday for Game 5. We'll be back here on Friday at Market Square for Game 6. And quite possibly in Chicago again for a seventh and deciding game for a trip to the NBA Finals. Meanwhile, the Utah Jazz sit and wait and rest while these two battle it out. Tonight on NBC, it's Dateline. A decorated Air Force officer had a love affair that sent her career into a tailspin. Was she the victim of a double standard? That's tonight on NBC. Wow. What a game at Market Square Arena. Another Memorial Day classic for Isaiah Thomas, Doug Collins, and Ahmad Rashad. I'm Bob Costas, and you've been watching the NBA on NBC.